Hey YouTube, it's Joe. We're back for another video. We're going to go ahead and fire up the smoke fire to 200 degrees. I have two pork butts that I'm going to split into four pieces to help with bark formation. I'm not going to use any drip trays and we're going to see what happens. So sit tight. And just like that, I trimmed them, rubbed them with mustard, threw the rub on, and put them on the grill. All right, guys, we're back at the cook. And I did not expect these to cook this fast. Let's go ahead and pop the lid and see what we got. Oh boy, they're looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these in foil. I'll be right back. Just finished wrapping all the pork butts. They're back on. So far so good, guys. Good morning, YouTube. We're back at the smoke fire. I just went on and pulled off the uh, the pork butts. Now, the cook didn't go without any issues, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that at the end of the video. I haven't taken a look at the grease drip tray. I'm curious to see if the grease management system worked out, so let's, let's peek in here and see what happens. So, Oh. Okay, right on. Yep, that's definitely some grease in there. Looks like it did its job. It did pretty good. Let's take a look at the inside of the cooker. Here's a shot of the flavorizer bars. what the inside looks like after a low and slow at 225 for almost 12 hours definitely need some cleaning so let's go ahead and clean it so this is what the grill looks like after about maybe three or four minutes not too bad just had to scrape everything off I really do like that you don't need a shop vac because of these holes here. You just scoop everything in there and it falls down into the tray. So, not too bad. Here's a shot of the pulled pork. Had a really good smoke ring, good flavor. It was good. So to wrap this video up guys, the cook, overall it was successful. We did turn out some pretty good um, pulled pork and it wasn't without his hiccups so let's get into that so this controller here at two hours and 15 minutes into the cook it froze now when it froze it was making a beeping sound i'm gonna go ahead and play a video of that now so there you have it guys my controller did indeed freeze i had to turn off the grill turn it back on and i got back up to spoken temperatures within about 10 minutes if any of you guys that are watching this have experienced that issue, please go ahead and comment and let me know. And if you've spoken to Weber about this issue, please comment and let me know what they said. I'm curious to read that. If it does become a known issue, it's not that big of a deal to me personally because this is something that Weber can fix through firmware or software updates. Um, it's just the nature of technology. That's what we're dealing with here. It is a piece of technology and technology will fail from time to time. So. The Weber smoke fire is not exempt from that. Um, but the intention of the video was to try to um, see if we'd actually get a grease fire, which we weren't successful. Um, I was really trying to replicate a video that we had seen. I'm pretty sure you guys know what video I'm talking about. Where somebody smoked two pork butts without drip tray and was able to catch their grill on fire. Um, we haven't got confirmation that the people that did have grease fires actually cleaned their pits after the burn-in. Um, if you guys know, feel free to comment that. Um, I took a look inside the cooker after the burn-in. This thing is rated for almost five pounds an hour um, at 600 degrees. That's the temperature which Weber recommends that we burn this in at. And there was plenty of ash buildup, so I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and clean it out before a long cook. So I went on and did that, and I don't know if that's the uh, if that's why I didn't have a grease fire, and they did. But all in all, guys, 
I want to let you guys know that you are dealing with a barbecue pit. There's grease in there, there's oxygen, and you have all the ingredients for a, um, a fire. Now, this isn't to single out Weber because, in all honesty, we should be cleaning and maintaining our, pit, our barbecue pits. Whether it be a GMG, you have a Yoder, you have a, a Rectech, whatever. If you go to YouTube and you search pellet grill, grease fire, Yoder fill, uh, Traeger fill, GMG fill, Rectech fill, whatever, you're going to find videos and I have them. So it's just the nature of pellet grilling in my opinion. It is something that can catch on fire, but just, um, you know, use your best judgment. Use a drip pan. That's what I'm going to go ahead and do. My pork butt was a little bit drier than I would like it. So uh, the drip tray really helps because I catch the drippings and introduce them back into the pulled pork as I'm pulling it. And end result is just more moist. It's, it's better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But for you guys that don't want to use a drip tray, I don't know. I'd highly recommend it. It helps maintain your pit and it helps with the cleanup. So it also reduces the chances of a grease fire. So there you have it, guys. The, gr the, the cook was overall successful. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share these videos. I'm going to be making some more videos. And if you guys have any recommendations on what you would like to see next, feel free to post it in the comment section. So I'll catch you guys on the flippity flip. Ugh, I can't believe I said that. My wife made me say that. All right, guys. See you guys later.